keep on watching until the end to find out why did Ava always feel uneducated herself. She was divorced twice before the age of 25. After being discovered via pictures taken by her brother-in-law, Gardner made her way to Hollywood, where she quickly attracted the attention of young star Mickey Rooney. Though their managing studio, Metro Goldwyn Mayer, didn't want the two to date, in order to protect Rooney's image, they were married just after her 19th birthday in 1942, a first for both of them. Their relationship was unfortunately doomed. As the then 21-year-old Rooney couldn't give up his bachelor lifestyle and Gardner realized she wasn't really in love with him. They divorced nine months after getting married, with Gardner citing mental cruelty as the reason for their split. She started a relationship with Sinatra while he was still married. After a string of affairs with various costers Gardner reconnected with Frank Sinatra and started what would be the most defining relationship of her career. The two first met in 1943, when she was at a club with Mickey Rooney and Sinatra was immediately captivated by her. Though they saw each other occasionally for the next few years, Sinatra was happily married to his longtime sweetheart, Nancy, and the two kept their distance until a fateful 1949 meeting at Metro Goldwyn Mayer. I looked at her and said, Jesus, you got prettier since last time I saw you, Sinatra said. This was not the young girl from Carolina at the studio. This was a woman who is glorious. The two entered into an affair, often getting into trouble during their escapades, like the time Sinatra's publicist had to get them out of jail after a drunken joyride at 3 a.m. left several storefront windows blown out by the couple's two pistols. Sinatra was still married, and the book recounts a time when an insistent gardener made the crooner drive to his house, where he phoned his wife Nancy asking her to confirm to the actress that he had asked her for a divorce. Though Nancy initially refused to give in, she eventually granted Sinatra a divorce, and he married Gardner in 1951. Ava and Frank Sinatra remained lifelong friends. Despite the fact that their tumultuous marriage ended in divorce in 1957, Ava and Old Blue Eyes remained close friends for the rest of Ava's life. In later years, when Ava moved to London, they would spend hours on the phone, and when Ava suffered a stroke on a visit to Los Angeles in 1986, Frank visited her in the hospital and covered her medical bills. According to Sinatra's daughter Tina, Avra was the love of his life and someone he never got over losing. Ava had a lifelong love for Corgis. Frank Sinatra gifted Ava with her first corgi puppy in 1952. She named it Rags, and he became her beloved companion until his death in the late 1960s. Two 
more courtiers would follow, Kara and later Morgan, who outlived his mistress, and after her death was adopted by Ava's great friend, Gregory Peck. Ava spent more years in London than anywhere else. Although chiefly associated with the glamour of Hollywood and the Spanish fiesta, Ava actually lived in foggy London town longer than anywhere else. She first visited the city in 1951 while filming Pandora and the Flying Dutchman, and she was immediately enchanted by it. It would be another 15 years before she made it her permanent home. Her last address, 34 Ennismore Gardens in Knightsbridge, bears a commemorative blue plaque dedicated to her memory, as well as a memorial urn in the gardens of the square, erected there by Ava's housekeeper and faithful companion in 1990. Ava was a great cook. Ava Gardner might not have been a domestic goddess, but she was a great cook. She favored southern cuisine, and her southern fried chicken was legendary among friends. While she maintained her famous figure throughout her life, Ava was not keen on dieting, with hamburgers, hot dogs, steaks and Coca-Cola among her favorite go-to treats. Ava's modern attitude predated women's lib. Nearly two decades before second-wave feminism and Betty Friedan's The Feminist Mystique, Ava demonstrated a liberated attitude to women's issues. Following her divorces from Mickey Rooney and Artie Shaw, she would break with conventions by going out to restaurants and nightclubs unescorted. She also had a brave attitude towards marriage, family planning and motherhood, believing in a woman's right to choose long before it became acceptable. Ava was nearsighted. What often appears on the screen as a sultry, slightly squinted gaze was a result of the fact that Ava was nearsighted. And when away from the cameras she often wore glasses. Ava was the inspiration behind Federico Fellini's La Dolce Vita. Ava spent a good deal of time in Rome during the 1950s, and her nightly escapades were well documented by the paparazzi. After reading an article about Ava and her co-star Tony Franciosa getting into a fight with the peps, Fellini thought up a story cantered around a glamorous Hollywood star visiting the Eternal City. In the 1960 film, the part was played by Anita Ekberg, who in one scene even wore a replica of Ava's dress for the film. She said wished she had focused more on education. When she came to Hollywood the only two books she had read were the Bible and Gone with the Wind. She always felt bad about her lack of education, but made up for it by continual self-education. When Ava moved to Hollywood, she had such a heavy southern accent that the studio sent her to a speech coach. Gardner retired from Hollywood at the end of her life, but had a stroke that left her partially paralyzed while recovering from pneumonia in 1986.
She died from bronchial pneumonia on January 25, 1990 after having a final cigarette and glass of champagne, according to her housekeeper. Over the course of her life, the actress had sometimes mused that she had prioritized the wrong things. I'm sorry I spent 25 years making films, she said in 1966. I wish now I had the things most important to a woman, a good marriage, children, a better education. Question of the week, do you remember how many books did she read in her life? Leave your answer in the comments, and we will pick a winner in the next week. What do you think of Ava's life? We are waiting for your comments. Drop us a suggestion for the future's videos.